from the rap. CNN's Lisa France calls out Matt Walsh's weird scientific objection <laughs> to a Black Little Mermaid. They have they have laundered this story several times now. Here's the story. Matt Walsh says on his show, I don't care if, if anyone of any race is playing any character. It's basically how it was in the 90s, and, and that's totally fine. I just don't like the double standard. And for that matter, he's like, can we talk about the science of, of a mermaid? Like, underwater, it wouldn't make sense to have dark skin because the, the sea creatures down there have no pigmentation. So not only would she be very pale, she'd be translucent, translucent like some kind of horrifying floating skeleton. Yeah, it right. was a joke. It was nonsense. Obviously, the Little Mermaid isn't a floating skeleton. The next thing that happens is they say Matt Walsh makes racist claim about Little Mermaid. They omit stuff. Then you get David French being like, here's Matt Walsh's argument for why Ariel should be white, which he never said. What? Now the story has become his weird scientific objection to a black Little Mermaid when his whole, when his, the, his whole point was he's okay with actors of any race playing any character. They have laundered the story to that degree. This is the media now. CNN. Lisa France calls out Mash. So what's going to happen now? They've laundered the story. It's completely fabricated. And someone's going to be watching CNN drooling, staring at the screen, confused. And they're going to say, Matt Walsh said racist things. And they're going to go, whoa. Well, and that's how you entrench the cult. Tim, that doesn't make sense, though, because the idea of a little mermaid is racist because a woman doesn't just have to be a maid. She can be uh, the CEO. <laughs> she can be the president. Little mer- she the doesn't little have to be a maid. So I don't like <laughs> Disney doing that. Little, these little girls are smart. A lot of them, CEO. just because they're good at cleaning and cooking, doesn't mean that she has to be a maid. Wait, I think wait. Little- Great point. Hold on there a minute. I just kind of thought of something. Oh, so uh, it's actually from the word made in. So, I don't, yeah. I don't care. On, wait, wait, I call them housekeepers, but I don't <laughs> have to keep a good one. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Just, I, I, so does that mean the word maid literally just means young woman? So when you're like, I got to call a maid, you're literally saying I need a young woman? Yeah, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. Well, that's kind of that funny lot. that like that all the time. L- young woman is synonymous with person who cleans your house. Yeah. I Isn't love that it. crazy? <laughs> I think it's great. So, so here's, here's what happens, right? Uh, the Newsweek runs this story. Oh, Matt yeah. Walsh slammed for saying Black Little Mermaid isn't scientific. What? Okay. Matt Walsh's actual segment and quote was hilarious. He said, if anything, not only should the Little Mermaid be pale, she should actually be translucent. And adding that if you look at deep sea creatures, they're like translucent. They have no kind of pigmentation whatsoever. And they're just like these horrifying skeletons floating around in the ocean. He's not wrong. That's what the Little Mermaid should look like. She should be totally pale and skeletal where you can see her skull through her face. <laughs> and that would skull. actually be a little version of Little Mermaid I would watch. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so this is what Cassandra, Cassandra McDonald, uh, formerly Cassandra Fairbanks, posted. It's like an anglerfish looking Ariel with like purple hair. This is one I really like though. <laughs> yeah, that one's good. The Little Mermaid yeah. and it's this horrifying looking skeletal monster. I love how he made a joke about the Little Mermaid having her skull be visible through her face and then the entirety of the media is just like we got him and they run this crazy story about him being racist media matters. when yeah. you I, I love these stories because when we can drive to the root of how they lied it gives you an understanding as to how the media in every facet is lying to you about what's going on in the world um, Matt Walsh also called himself a translucent rights activist, yes. <laughs> which is important to bring up here. But I think this whole thing is a distraction. I think this, from the very beginning, I think this is just a, something to waste our time. And I think Disney loves this. I think this is the way that now the major movie industry knows that they could sell the movie by creating controversy. What better way to create a controversy than to create this artificial character that, of course, they know people are going to debate. They know people are going to have a conversations about. They know is, is going to spur on debate. People call this uh, fan baiting and I think this is all marketing this is all PR by Disney trying to of course promote their movie at the end of the day this is what it is <laughs> I love this picture because it's like uh, it, 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 it's it's just, I just hilarious. It looks like Yzma from the Emperor's New Greek, <laughs> which I love I love Yzma it's, it's Ariel with like an angler fish <laughs> light and like That's big good. teeth and big bulbous eyes. Uh, but one That's thing we're, we're, we're not talking about the elephant in the room that all Disney movies are based on trauma based mind control with the main character losing a very close loved person yep. at the very beginning like their parent or their Is sibling. Oh yeah, 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 everyone. Yeah, yeah. Who did the little mermaid? Her Bambi. mom? 
Yeah, her mom died. Yep. Yeah. Little Mermaid's mom dies. Yeah. How does she die? She gets caught in like a trawler's Probably net. Like a fishing oh. net. Yeah. She gets eaten. Jason Momoa. <laughs> she gets put in Jason fish. Momoa. Domestic <laughs> yes. violence. Aquaman. Terrible. It's all trauma based no, mind like, control. It, it is. Yeah. It is. It, but it really is. The Disney stuff is because it's supposed to. You know, all of a sudden. It, it, That's how they get the little kids hooked by the trauma. It creates like this cortisol response. The little kids like, "What? I'm so sad." But then it, you know, has this like fake, you know, uh, fairy tale. What happened ending. to Ariel's mom? I'm not sure. I don't think they ever say, do they? That's I think we should vague. make a short where she gets caught in like a trawler's <laughs> net. She's like, ah, and then she oh, goes right no. to the grinder. Oh, 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 Tim, we're not going to eat oh. bumblebee tuna. We're not eating. <laughs> Come, on. Come on. I like bumblebee tuna. <laughs> no, no. I lo- I, but, but while this story is both, I love the humorous output, you know, with the ridiculous looking Ariel. But no, this is an important point because when you're reading a story about, say, Donald Trump, this is how you understand you can you can drive from this story to its root and because it's a little mermaid it's something that regular people might actually understand if you go to them and you say hey did you know the the shinzo abe hoax and they'll go the who the, what? the shinzo he's japan and trump and the fish and i don't know what you're talking about you go to them and say you know the new little mermaid movie yeah you hear about that racist guy yeah look at this yep something they've already been primed mm-hmm. to like they've heard right mm-hmm. it's like when um that dude from fleckus talks goes in the street and says who's george washington like i don't know Name the Kardashian sisters, and they're like, "Oh, it's so and so, yeah, yeah, and they yeah, know yeah. it all." So I, I, I like this, you know. And also, I'm having a good time. It's funny. Matt, Matt's a funny guy. Love I, I love LGBTQ Nation wrote that he was having a meltdown, and then like anybody who knows Matt Walsh is like a Matt Walsh. The most extreme version of his meltdown is him going to be going like, "Huh? Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah." I, I think you're right. I, I think that it's always great to show people the extremes the left go to set in a narrative, and how much the media just actively will push something that's just the complete opposite of what the case may be and when it's funny it plays more also and that's where you get this where this will stick in people's heads of another outrageous attempt to to make matt walsh into something that he's not so i mean hey it kind of checks all the boxes to illustrate that it's it's amazing that they're like he said a mermaid shouldn't be black and they stop because if they did the full context they'd be like he said the mermaid should have Have translucent skin skin with her skull being exposed you'd be like i don't understand how that's racist what is that so that's why he made himself a pro-translucent activist and everyone's saying he's pro-trans so yeah, but guys, in 20 years, Little Mermaid will be transgender. 20? That's you think it'd be less? That's too long? Well, yeah. when did when did the... It was 1989 when the Little Mermaid cartoon came out. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's actually been, you know, it's been like 30, it's been 33 years. Well, yeah, you're right. It's, it we're, we're in the acceleration uh, phase of this where, yeah, it'll probably be two years. And and I, I know Ryan here is talking about education, but Ryan, what do you think that we went wrong where in schools now they have these, you know, transition closets where these teachers, mm-hmm. you see libs of TikTok. Like, why do you think they're so motivated to indoctrinate kids? It's almost like they're coordinated or almost. 100% it's coordinated. You know, I mean, and that's where you look at this and, and I'll give you an example of what happened in Oklahoma. We had a teacher who was giving kids access to pornography in the classroom. That didn't make sense. Like, what? So, hey, so I go out and go, okay, she said she broke the law. She said that uh, she's going to keep breaking the law. Then she's shown pornography to kids. We need to take her teaching certificate. That's literally what the law said. Yeah, okay, right? (laughs) Well, then the media starts in this narrative that I'm after all the teachers. I'm like, not after all the teachers. I'm after one teacher's teaching certificate because she was giving access to pornography. And they go, well, that's censorship. I go, no, no. No, what is appropriate for kids in school is not censorship, right? Well, and then, well, real quick, yeah, was she was she a government employee? Yes, it's not. It's not. It, you can call it censorship, sure, but it's not a violation of one A or First Amendment right. rights when that's the government right. tells the government it can't do something. It, that's exactly right. But again, so then, well, I'll, t- I'll take it a step further. Then the media in Oklahoma run this list of quote banned books in Oklahoma. Hmm. Yeah, it came from an international group that said, hey, we've looked at Oklahoma's law, so we think these books are banned there. And they run it for a week, and I'm going out there every every day going, we don't have any banned books. We just have a minor, a, you cannot give pornography to a minor law <laughs> that's like been around like every state for 30 years. Yeah. I mean, but, but the media has run with this narrative and tried to paint it as, well, hey, if you're gonna question her, you're going after all teachers, that's not true. And number two, you're trying to ban. But I mean, they, they've gone. Hey, he's going to ban Huckleberry Finn. And wh- they, why do they mean, always ban Huck Finn? Because that's the N word, I guess. Yeah, yeah that's why. There is but that. I mean, just it, that that book was required reading. And I see 1984 and yep. uh, in Brave New World, they're getting banned. Why? Because of predictive programming. Why? I mean, why? I mean, why do you think those are getting banned? Well, and again, I don't. You know, they set this up. They're not I, fiction anymore. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Let's the cat out of the bag, I guess. Yeah, but you know, it's not Republicans. It's not conservatives. It's not libertarians pushing banning of books. Mm-hmm. There's a difference. between between having conversations about, I mean, again, and I had someone, I had a reporter say, hey, but 
you know, kids can get porn on their phone. I go, hold on. So the argument is, <laughs> yeah, it's out there. So yeah. we should have it in the school library for second graders. Yeah, that's outrageous. And to your point, it's part. The left is intentionally trying to indoctrinate kids, push them away from their parents. Because yeah. guess what? You go home and tell your parents about it. They go, wait, what's going on? So the kid further withdraws from their parents. They want there to be no, hey, male, female, they're those don't matter there's really no gender or there's no sex it's fluid and it becomes this confusing we're gonna have the most confused generation in the history of the united states there was a story about a woman i was reading it was i think it was a social media post and she said that her daughter was in school and the school had been transitioning her daughter without her knowing her daughter was growing increasingly depressed Gosh. and what had happened what it, what it seems like from the story i mean maybe it's not true it's an anecdote is that the girl was becoming depressed because the school was telling her and encouraging her and pushing her and everyone around her is goading her and saying, yes, yes. And then she eventually told her mom she didn't want to go to school anymore because it was giving her anxiety. Yep. And then as soon as she stopped going to school, she she stopped all the pronoun stuff. She stopped the transition mm -hmm. stuff because apparently the story is she never wanted to, but she was being pressured to. That's kind of creepy and scary. Yeah. I mean, it's become, you know, you have activists that are pushing it. And I mean, again, these are kids. I mean, this is part of, you know, my background is as a teacher. You have to take responsibility very seriously as a teacher to go, these are young, impressionable kids. I'm not going to sit here and push an ideology or push a point of view on them. I want them to have multiple points of view and come to their own conclusion. But now you've got the left who's decided we're going to dress folks up and pretend to be teachers. Then they're going to go in there and they're going to push this. And, and then you create this culture of it, to your point. Young people are going to be so confused. It causes depression. It causes frustrations, and it doesn't equal a job. Thanks for checking out this segment from the TimCast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.